Hello and welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Sunday Go to Meeting Time, released in 1936. It's the 139th in the series and it's directed by Frizz Freeling. It is also the second in the Censored 11 series. As such, there is no official release. The person who scanned this print is aware I'm using it for this review, but wishes to remain anonymous. In case you haven't seen this one, it is under copyright, so I can't show you the full thing here, but basically the church bells are ringing, and after a few stereotype scenes of African Americans doing various activities, we see a woman dragging a young man by the name of Nicodemus off to church. He then leaves church to continue, well, stealing chickens, I guess. He ends up, though, going into the Hades Court of Justice, where he encounters the devil himself. If your gin has left your life for when Now just for that you're gonna have to pay Cause you got to give the devil his due so first up, you'll see a re-edit of the original audio commentary I did before I had to take that down. So thanks to my good friend Blue Genocide for doing that for me. You'll also hear some new thoughts from me, along with the history of the music in this short by my good friend Manny Cruz, the Tooney tenor. So grab some popcorn and I hope you enjoy the review. And then this one is actually similar in story to Going to Heaven on a Mule, where the main character is, is doing, I guess, the wrong things and... He has a, a, there's like a dream sequence and then um, tries to learn a lesson. Whereas here, at least the message is a lot stronger. So here we have the Hades Court of Justice and I like the backgrounds here, like in the shadows. That's, I will say that the, the, the look of this uh, hell part is really, really good. And, you know, as I said, it's just, just unfortunate that, the, that there was that element there of um, poor caricatures. But, I mean, look at the backgrounds. They're, this would have been interesting to see restored. And, and there was going to be a Censored 11 DVD release. Apparently, this has been restored, along with the other Censored 11. And they were going to release it, but then Warner's got cold feet. And I, and I get it, okay? I'm not... You know, they, I think they should release it for historical purposes through Warner Archive. Um, but... Yeah, I can understand why they would get cold, cold feet. Yeah, like, there's there's, there's only a very few redeeming factors here. I mean, I probably wouldn't even... I definitely, actually, definitely wouldn't recommend the casual uh, moviegoer to watch this one unless they absolutely know the proper historical context behind these um, films that, uh, again, I feel that they had good intentions, but, yeah, ultimately, it's still, it was wrong then. It's still wrong today. So those are my original thoughts at the time. Now, first up, look at the background here. So you got the, you know, Mabby's barbecue pit, but just take a very close look. See? It's basically Hanna-Barbera well before Hanna-Barbera. I do like that name, Judge Jalem. It's similar to how you see in Three Stooges, you know, Dr. I Yankum for dentists but it can be probably seen as problematic in a short field with African Americans. But out of context, I still think it's a funny name. Though for some reason, the judge looks different at the end of the cartoon, which is kind of weird, but anyway. And of course, you're gonna see every black stereotype in the book, literally. So before I give you my thoughts on the short itself, here is my good friend Manny Cruz, the Toonie tenor himself, to discuss the history of the songs in this short. Take it away, Manny. Hi, everyone. This is Manny Cruz, the Toonie tenor, coming at you with some musical trivia for the 1936 Merry Melody cartoon, Sunday Go to Meeting Time, directed by Frizz Freeling. And... It's time for Manny's Music Time with music trivia for you today. Bum. Wow, pretty, uh, <laughs> I really got to find a piano part for that. So let's talk about the music of this particular cartoon. It's always, I don't know, with this particular cartoon, there are some sections of it musically that I really, really enjoy. But it's just, it really is such a shame that the visuals of the cartoon, the stereotyping, and the negative depictions of African Americans just really take away from it. I mean, for example, I can listen to the title track, especially when the two people that are attending church, they're walking down the street. And the way that it's sung, it sounds so, 
so nice if you just listen to it. I actually isolated the music track for the title track years ago, and I have it on my phone, and I listen to it occasionally. And just the score itself, sections of it, uh, the instrumental stuff that Norman Spencer did for this cartoon, sounds really neat. But then when you put on the visuals, that's when it all goes to, you know, heck and back. So let's talk about the musical cues in this cartoon. So the main ones, obviously, is the title track, Sunday Go to Meeting Time, by Todd Seymour and V. Lawnhurst. Save Me Sister, by Harold Arlen and Yip Harburg. And you also hear a little bit of Shout All Over God's Heaven, which is a traditional spiritual. And You've Got to Give the Devil His Due, which I'm assuming is an original piece of music composed by Norman Spencer. I sadly could not find any information for it. So for the title track itself, the only recording that exists of this song is this cartoon. And several years ago, because again, I really enjoy the title track in terms of you know the melody and everything like that. I was trying to find the sheet music for it a few years ago, and I managed to find a copy online, but that was on my old computer, and sadly, my old computer was destroyed. I'll have to try to find that sheet music another time, but from what I remember looking at it, it wasn't the same as what's in the cartoon, so maybe one day I could find another transcription of it. Let's talk about the composers of the title track itself. So you have Tot Seymour and V. Lawnhurst, who... I was assuming this entire time were two men, but I was very, very wrong. So this information that I'm about to tell you comes from a website called wildwomenofsong.com, and I quote, When lyricist Todd Seymour paired up with pianist composer V. Lawnhurst, they must have known it was a dream partnership. How else to explain the long stream of hit tunes that poured out of them? Their publishing company, Famous Music, touted them as the first successful team of girl songwriters in popular music history. Individually and together, Todd Seymour and V. Lawnhurst were pioneers in the new medium of radio, and their songs, though perhaps not as well known today, were ubiquitous with the pop music landscape of the 1930s. Born Grace Mann in New York City, Todd Seymour was already in demand as a very good lyricist in the 1920s. A staff lyricist at Irving Berlin's publishing company, she wrote special material for headliners like Mae West and Sophie Tucker, as well as contributing to many of the Siegfried Follies reviews. V. Lawnhurst, born Laura Lowenhurst in New York City as well, has been busy wowing audiences with her really superb piano playing. As half of a duo with fellow pianist Muriel Pollock, she cut numerous records and piano roles. Like I said, if you'd like to read more about these two particular composers, I highly recommend going to the website, wildwomenofsong.com. Again, I was under the impression the entire time that Todd Seymour, the lyricist, and B. Lawnhurst, the composer, were men. I remember when I was taking my graduate studies class on art song. So music that, uh, it's poetry set to music, and many of the composers of art music or art song are usually men, but we had a part of the class where we got to focus on women composers, especially ones from Germany, like Alma Mahler and Fanny Mendelssohn and things of that nature. And a lot of their music is just incredibly beautiful, but sadly, because of the purveying issues about the role of women in music, sadly, a lot of misogynistic views that still exist about women and their contributions to the arts. It's a shame that it's taken so long for many of these artists to be recognized for the wonderful music they composed. And in this particular case, like I said, the title track of this song, I really, really enjoy. I was kind of hoping I could find a little bit more information about them, but that's what I could really dig up for now. Now for the song Save Me Sister that's also featured in this cartoon, that one was composed by Harold Arlen and the lyrics were composed by Yip Hardberg. Now let's talk a little bit about Harold Arlen. Oh boy, you got a big one here. He was born as Hyman Arluck. He was born February 15th, 1905 in Buffalo, New York. Passed away April 23rd, 1986 in New York City. He was the son of a Jewish cantor and in the 1920s he moved to New York City where he was working as an accompanist in vaudeville. He eventually struck success with his first popular song, Get Happy, with lyrics composed by Ted Kohler. Get Happy, for Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies fans, 
sounds familiar because that's the same Get Happy, which was the original Merry Melodies theme song that premiered with the first Merry Melody cartoon in 1931, Lady Play Your Mandolin. Harold Arlen is a legend in American songwriting. I mean, I could rattle off the list of songs. Get Happy, like I mentioned, Stormy Weather, I've Got the World on a String. And of course, the contributions he made to one of the most famous movies of all time, 1939's The Wizard of Oz. He wrote the music for that film, Follow the Yellow Brick Road, If I Only Had a Brain, and of course, one of the most famous songs in history, the beautiful, beautiful Over the Rainbow that was originally performed by Judy Garland in the film. For the Warner Brothers fans, Harlan composed a fair amount of songs that have been featured in Warner Brothers cartoons. Like I said, Get Happy. Obviously, this one, Save Me Sister. Captain of the Clouds. And two big ones, especially when Carl Stalling became the musical director at the studio. Blues in the Night. Carl Stalling used that one a lot. And Norman Spencer used this upcoming song in one of the best Warner Brothers shorts ever made that was made in the same year as this one. I Love the Singer from the cartoon of the same name in 1936. Yep, Harold Arlen was the guy who wrote the music for that cartoon and the song itself. And Arlen also worked with other lyricists along with Yip Harburg and Ted Kohler. He won an Academy Award for his contributions. And his music has been recorded by legendary artists like George Harrison of the Beatles, Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra, and Ella Fitzgerald. Let's talk about the lyricists of Save Me Sister. Yip Harburg was born Edgar Yipsel Harburg. That was his legal name, but he was originally born as Isidore Hochberg. He was born April 8th, 1896 in New York City, and he passed away March 5th, 1981 in Los Angeles. He wrote all the lyrics for the music in The Wizard of Oz, so he collaborated with Harold Arlen. He also wrote the lyrics for the famous songs Brother Can You Spare a Dime in April in Paris. Just like Harold Arlen, he was he was a son of Orthodox Jews who migrated from Russia in the 1800s, and he was a very prolific song lyricist in Hollywood and Broadway, and he was also very well known for his leftist leanings, and he was starting to draw the ire of the Red Scare and the blacklist that was going on in Hollywood in the 1950s. Think of McCarthyism and things of that nature. He definitely had a, a target on his head during that time period. And for the cartoon itself, you have the two spirituals that are featured, as I mentioned before. Shout All Over God's Heaven, which is a traditional spiritual. I actually remember hearing that spiritual for the first time on an episode of one of my personal favorite TV shows, All in the Family, which is a brilliant, brilliant satire, in my opinion. It still holds up to this day. Yes, there's a lot of controversial material, not only in the 1970s. But I think most of the material and that show holds up really well. And in one of the episodes of the show, Mike Stivick, uh, Archie Bunker, the main character of the show, his son-in-law, was singing All God's Children Got Choose or something of that nature, the lyrics of the song, in the episode to mock Archie. And as I mentioned before, you got to give the devil his due was an original composition by Norman Spencer. Which leads me to the singer of both the reverend in the beginning of this cartoon and the devil himself and i thought it was very interesting that the same man played both the devil and the reverend that sings in the beginning of the cartoon i will say in opera they write for the voice so for basses usually those are characters that are old men wise men sometimes very evil sinister characters and i thought it was pretty funny that kind of like opera casting they use the bass to play the very benevolent preacher but also the devil in the cartoon that for years I was going crazy trying to find who the name of that singer was. So who is that guy? I want to shout out in particular the recent book that came out, Cartoon Voices of the Golden Age, 1930 to 1970 by Keith Scott. Thank you, Keith, for your tremendous research. And according to his book, the voice of the devil and the preacher with that beautiful bass voice was Roy Glenn. So Roy Glenn was born June 3rd, 1914, and he passed away March 12th, 1971. So he was probably 22 years old when he recorded it. And he started working in radio. He actually worked on the Amos and Andy show as well as the Jack Benny show. He also worked in television and he appeared in radio. And he also worked in some animation here and there. He worked for Warner Brothers. He worked for Disney. He worked for MGM. So he had a pretty extensive career. But man, I wish I could find more recordings of him singing because I love the voice that he has in the beginning of that cartoon. All right. And these are my thoughts for the 1936 Merry Melody Sunday Go to Meeting Time. I love the music of this cartoon. I love the voice work from Roy Glenn. And the title track is catchy. The Gotta Give the Devil is Due. I do like the music of it. Norman Spencer does a pretty nice score. But yeah, once you start hearing Nicodemus talk and his wife and other stereotypical aspects of the cartoon it really pulls you out. But you know what? Thank goodness for headphones. So thanks again for listening, folks. Have a wonderful day. And uh, that's all, folks.
So in relation to this short, so we're on the first color censored 11 short and the first of sadly many for Frizz Freeling. See, Frizz just a year ago directed what many considered to be one of, if not the worst Looney Tunes ever made, which is Going to Heaven on a Mule, in terms of depictions of African Americans. Now, it's a terrible short, but at least the title song is easily the highlight, and I guess if you close your eyes, the song is pretty nice to listen to. Here, a year later, Frizz tries his hand again at directing a black-themed short, and while problematic, it definitely fares way better than his previous effort. So first off, as Manny mentions, the music in this short is superb, and this short is worth watching for that alone. The title song is easily the highlight, and dance animation to the song is great and highlights Frizz's wonderful timing. The original song, You Gotta Give the Devil His Due, is the other highlight, with, again, wonderful singing and once again great timing, but here it's also the imagery of hell in this short that really stands out. It was only fairly recently that Warner Brothers were able to use the three-strip Technicolor process for the color shorts after the exclusive rights to that technology by Disney expired. Boy oh boy do they use it to full effect here and it's simply stunning. And as mentioned in my original track, I want to see this restored just to see the backgrounds pop even more. Sadly, however, as with all the case of just about all the Sensor 11 shorts, with every good aspect of a cartoon, there is an equally bad one. All the gags involving the bald heads either being polished with shoe polish or used as a bell in the church just hurt this one on top of the awful designs of the characters, except perhaps the devil and his minions, some of the voices, and just about every stereotype of the activities of African Americans with gambling, obsession with chickens, and of course, that the church is a major part of African American lives. Yes, church was and is a major part of many African American lives, but the way the element is presented, not just in this short, but in many other movies, radio shows, and literature of the time, it's just so exaggerated that it could be seen as laughable, except of course, it's not funny. So this one gets a four out of 10, for me, with the positives being, as I mentioned, the music and the hell sequences. Of course, the negatives are the other imagery and the really weak story. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take care.